Hey, 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 what's going on? I'm Cantus Simmons. And one of the biggest questions that parents and students ask me is, Cantus, how can I find money for college? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you 7.25 things that you want to consider when completing and filling out FAFSA. FAFSA is the free application of federal student aid. And in this video, I'm going to show you about 7.25 different secrets, secrets that you want to consider when completing the financial aid. Now, let me share this equation with you because not only is financial aid important, but being able to pay the big college tuition bill. And this is the equation that I recommend everyone use when paying the big college tuition bill, all right? So it, it goes like this. So here's the equation. Make sure I got the right, here we go, GM, plus OM plus YM is how we're going to pay for college. All right. And in this video, I'm going to spend some time talking about the GM. Okay. What's the GM? The GM is the government's money. Okay. It's the government's money. Now we're going to talk all about financial aid and how to get access to federal funds. And then the second way to pay for college is the OM in the form of other people's money, right? Others' money. Now, others' money come in two forms. It comes in the forms of scholarships and it comes in the form of student loans. Now, I talk a, a lot about scholarships. Uh, one of my best-selling books, Scholarship Seekers Revealed, How to Locate, Land, and Lock Down College Funding. If you want more information about that, hey, uh, down below, you'll see a resource to be able to get uh, my best-selling book on scholarships. And the third way that we want to pay for college is using <laughs> your money. All right, your money. So if we can't, if you don't have the resources for your money, then it's important to utilize other people's money. And if you don't have other people's money in the form of scholarships, then it's important that we take advantage of the government's money. And in this video, I wanna show you, show you exactly how to get access to the government's money, all right? Now, we wanna get access to the government's money through something called FAFSA, okay? FAFSA stands for the Free Application of Federal Student Aid. All right. Anytime when we're looking at federal aid, FAFSA is the number one go to because now this is going to put you in a situation where the federal government is going to be able to communicate to you and let you know how to get access to some federal funds that are out there. You know, right now, today, uh, one of the big reasons students don't go to college and the reason students drop out of college is because of money. So let me show, share with you. Uh, these 7.25 things that you want to consider when completing FAFSA. All right, let me give you these, uh, um, I'm call them FAFSA secrets, all right? Let me give you these FAFSA secrets. Here's secret number one. And by the way, uh, down below as well too, uh, I go more in depth in a free college funding workshop all about FAFSA, all about scholarships, and all about how to use your money uh, to plan, to save, and invest your money. And if you want to attend uh, that free workshop, hey, click the link down below. It's my free college funding workshop. Uh, we do these like every other week, and I want you and your family to be able to jump on. Uh, click the link down below to get access to that. All right, so here's FAFSA secret number one. FAFSA secret number one is that FAFSA opens between October 1st and December 1st. OK, now that's a big, big secret. Right. And the reason I share this is because a lot of times people are sort of in la la land on what to do and when it opens. Now, a few years ago, FAFSA, they the application normally open up right on October 1st. Over the last few years, they've been having some transitions, some upgrades, some improvements to it. And now it's been pushed further back to like December December 1st, all right? If you go to their website, studentaid.gov, and maybe I'll pull that up for you here, uh, studentaid.gov, studentaid.gov, where it 
it will give you the let you know exactly when it opens. But if you go to studentaid.gov, let me find it here. There we go, studentaid.gov. If you go to this website, it'll always have um, all the most current information about FAFSA. All right, studentaid.gov, studentaid.gov. But the first thing you want to realize is that it opens between uh, October 1st and December 1st. Now, when we consider FAFSA, we must consider FAFSA in three cases, all right? School deadlines, state deadlines, and federal deadlines, all right? So now, when we're looking at the school deadlines, you know, the different schools that you're applying to, the different schools that you're considering, what are their deadlines? When do they open and when do they close? All right. State deadlines. When do they open? When do they close? Federal deadlines. When do they open and when do they close? And in this season, look between October 1st and December 1st for when FAFSA should open. All right. Let me give you secret number two. Let me give you secret number two. Secret number two is this. If we know the opening dates, guess what? We need to know the closing dates. All right. FAFSA closes June 30th. June 30th. So if you are a high school senior or a parent of a high school senior and your student is going through their senior year, then guess what? We want to open up uh, October to December. We want to make sure that things are completed before June 30th. And normally that's the June 30th before your student is going into their freshman year. But again, we want to make sure that we understand the deadlines for the school for the state and the federal. So even though the federal aid may be the deadline is June 30th, you want to make sure that you take the time to really go look at uh, the school deadline, the state deadline, as well as the federal deadlines where this is concerned. Okay, so that's secret number two. That's secret number two. Here's secret number three. Complete FAFSA early, just in case you need to appeal. Yeah, complete FAFSA early just in case you need to appeal. You say, Candace, what is an appeal? Well, an appeal is when you as a parent or a student, and you complete FAFSA, that's the free application of federal student aid, and you feel like the numbers did not come back in favor of what may be going on in your household, right? Or you feel like, hey, I submitted FAFSA, submitted you know, uh, money to the federal, uh, my application to the federal government, but... I don't think this is right. Or you feel like, well, we don't make enough money. We don't make any money. Why do they say that we can't get any financial aid? Well, if you fall into that situation by completing FAFSA early, it gives you the opportunity now to go in to appeal FAFSA, okay? It gives you the opportunity to go in to appeal FAFSA. That means, hey, you can talk to somebody uh, there at the federal, the federal financial aid office, and then now, you can be able to give clarity and uh, specify where you feel like there are some challenges and be able to appeal that, okay? So secret number three there is to complete FAFSA early just in case you need to appeal. Here's secret number four. Complete FAFSA every single year, regardless. Yeah, complete FAFSA every single year. Now, if you are a high school student or high school senior going into college or or a parent of a high school senior going into college, you want to complete FAFSA, okay? If you are a freshman student in college currently, you want to complete FAFSA before your sophomore year. If you're a sophomore student, you want to apply for the junior year. If you're a junior student, you want to apply for the senior year. If you're a senior year, you want to make sure that you apply for that FAFSA. Every single year in which you need the money, you want to make sure that you apply for FAFSA. Why? Because things change. Yeah, like your financial, your financial needs right now, wherever you may be, they may differ next year. Even if you make a million dollars a day, my encouragement is for you to complete FAFSA every single year. Even if you don't think that they're going to give you any money, complete FAFSA. Because I've seen so many families during the year they may have a loss in their family, mother die, father die, may have a job loss, right? You may lose a source of income. 
a business may go under. You know, a few years ago, in the um, in 2020, a lot of things changed, right? And guess what? That impacted a lot of people's financial finances and their financial status. So what I want you to do is, regardless of what's going on in your household, complete FAFSA every single year. Every single year that you're in college, make sure you are completing FAFSA. All right. Here is FAFSA secret number five. FAFSA secret number five. FAFSA will also assist with student loans if needed. Yes, FAFSA will assist with student loans if needed. Now, here's what I mean by this. When you complete FAFSA, the federal government is going to let you know what federal aid is out there available for you and how much is um, can be appropriated to you and your family. Now, if you realize that, hey, based on this school, they're giving us some financial aid. However, there's some money that we still need. Federal, by completing the FAFSA, it's going to also give you leads and access to federal student loans. Okay. Now there are some private student loans out there that have different rates and interest rates and different things like that, but there are also some federal student loans. And when you complete FAFSA, it now puts you in a situation to be able to get access to information on federal student loans. Of course, student loans are other people's money that you have to pay back. Okay. But you want to complete FAFSA. Not only that, you know, I've even seen that in, in certain colleges, when they notice that you don't complete FAFSA, they almost assume, but they don't need the money. Right? Even for scholarships, like if you're submitting, and we talk more about that in, in uh, Scholarship Seekers Revealed, but if you are applying for a scholarship and they look to see that you haven't completed FAFSA, guess what? Uh, they may lean to giving it to somebody else. Same thing in the actually on the college, right? When you complete FAFSA at a particular college and the college, the college's financial aid department is now looking to try to help bring you more money and they realize, wow, you didn't complete FAFSA. They are typically lean towards giving that to somebody else. Okay, so secret number five, FAFSA will assist with student loans if needed. OK, so make sure you complete FAFSA. All right. Here's secret number six. Here's secrets number six. You only need a few key pieces of information on hand to fill out the FAFSA. Yeah, you only need a few key pieces of information. Now, let me go ahead and give you these four pieces of information um, that you need. OK, here are the four the four key pieces of information that you need. All right. Number one. You need student income. You need parents' income. You need student assets. And you need parent assets. Okay. And my college funding workshop, I go more in depth on how and different strategies that you can use to maximize uh, your federal aid return. But when you understand parents' income, parents' assets, and you understand students' income, students' assets, there are some strategies that you can now put together because. These are the four most important, simple things that FAFSA needs when applying for FAF, um, for financial aid, okay? So you want to make sure that uh, these key pieces of information are in place. You can locate them, and then you're going to use those to complete FAFSA, all right? Number seven, number seven, you can list up to 20 schools now on the FAFSA application. Yeah, 20 schools now. I think at one time it used to be 10. But here's the beauty of this. When you complete FAFSA, you can also let uh, the federal aid on the application, you can communicate to them the 20 
Like, I don't have all the fingers for it. Like, the 20 <laughs> different schools, I guess nobody has 20 fingers, right? <laughs> but the 20 different schools that you are interested in, like you're seriously interested in. Now, I believe that as you're shopping for a college, you should also be shopping for money. They should go hand in hand, right? Just like when you're looking for a car, right? You want to see if a car is a great fit. You want to see if the car fits your family, but then you want to also make sure that you can buy a car. Same thing for a house. Is the house a great fit? Is it in a great location? But then, hey, do we have the financing to pay for the house? The same thing is true where colleges are concerned and finding money for college are concerned. They go together. And so now when you complete FAFSA, you can put up to 20 different schools on your application, right? Now, this is a game changer because now when you seriously think about the schools that you want to go to, schools that uh, will help prepare you for your future career, schools that will put you in a a uh, great place of knowledge and great place of community and be able to enhance your future, put those on the FAFSA application. And then once you complete FAFSA, FAFSA will be able to show you and give you what they call a student aid report. And now you can see how much money is available to you for each one of these colleges. And then now you have to make a decision based off of money. You can see, hey, this college... Well, the federal aid gives me this much money for this college. However, I need this amount left over. And you can go through that through all 20 schools to now be able to make a wise decision as far as which college you should go to. All right. So secret number seven, you can list up to 20 schools on the FAFSA application. And here's the 7.2 fifth secret. You must provide tax data transfer consent and approval. So when you complete the FAFSA, remember those four, four pieces of information, students' income, students' assets, parents' income, and parents' assets. Now, part of that in the assets and the income is your tax data information. And so when we say that you now have to provide consent, you got to provide consent and approval for a few different things. So number one, when you you know complete your taxes, that's now connected to the IRS. We have to give approval and consent that the information in the IRS can now transfer to the FAFSA application. So we gotta give approval and consent on that. Then once the information is in IRS connected to FAFSA and they're now connected, now that the FAFSA has the IRS information, guess what? We have to get a consent and approval that now this information can now be transferred to the college. So the colleges can see what's on the FAFSA and they'll also see what's connected there with the IRS. And then, right, the colleges, they now look at it on their financial aid report to look to see if there are any other scholarships and money that's there. All I'm simply saying now is that if you as a parent, if you as a contributor are working and partnering with your student on financial aid, on this FAFSA application, you have to give consent so that it can be transferred over. At one time, I think it was done automatically. Now you have to give consent and approval to be able to have that transferred over. OK, have that transferred over. All right. So let me give you these uh, 7.25 secrets again. Number one, FAFSA opens between October 1st, December 1st. Make sure you go to studentaid.gov. Go to the website, studentaid.gov, federalstudentaid.gov to make sure you have um, the deadline when it pops up. Um, FAFSA closes June 30th. Closes June 30th. Now you want to make sure you consider school deadlines state deadlines, as well as federal deadlines. But make sure you take advantage of that open and close date. Number three, complete FAFSA early, just in case you need to appeal. Listen, do not wait to the last minute. Go ahead, hit those deadlines, get it in, do the work. And then now if something pops up, you can complete an appeal letter. Number four, complete FAFSA every single year. 
regardless of what's going on in your household, regardless in your family, every single year. Number five, FAFSA will also assist with student loans. And I should probably put on here, FAFSA will also assist with uh, student scholarships, right? Make sure that you, when you complete FAFSA, it's going to also help you not end up in a student loan debt trap because FAFSA will clearly tell you what's available out there with federal student loans and how much more you may need if you have to take the student loan route. Uh, number six, you only need a few key pieces of information on uh, when completing FAFSA. Again, federal student, uh, student index, student income, student assets, parents' income, parents' assets. Make sure now that you have those information. Number seven, you can now list up to 20 schools on the application. At one time it was 10. Now you can be very strategic. Looking at the 20 schools that you're seriously interested in, put those on the application. And 7.2 fifth uh, thing there is to give consent so that your taxes and the, uh, the information from the IRS, that it can be approved to be transferred from the IRS to the FAFSA uh, for the FAFSA application. All right, listen, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Now, listen, I go more in depth in this in my free college funding workshop. Uh, this is where I really take the time to break down the government's money, how to find other people's money in the form of scholarships, and give you some strategies on how to use your money. If you want to attend that free workshop, click the link down below where I go more in depth on that. Also down below, if you want to get a copy of my best-selling uh, college funding book, Scholarship Seekers Reveal, The Roadmap to Locate land and lock down college funds. Now, if you are seriously interested in going into college and want to do it with other people's money, listen, click the link down below so you can get access to this. And uh, I want to be able to help you and support you pay the big college tuition bill. Hey, remember this, only one game in life counts, and that is to play your A game. Hey, I'm Kansas Simmons. Hey, check out the next video if you need more help and assistance on succeeding in school. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.